Hello guys, welcome again to Thundertronics video blog about electronics engineering. In this episode, I will explain how I designed a humidity and temperature sensor using very cheap components such as an Arduino Pro Mini and other stuff. DHT11 and DHT22 sensors can measure both humidity and temperature. They are cheap and suitable for hobbyists and makers as well as available from lots of sources. In this tutorial, I will explain how I use an Arduino Pro Mini board to read the data from these two sensors and display them on LCD and serial port if you want to. Starting off, let's clarify that the two sensors differ in terms of specs as shown here, but they are still used nearly the same way as will be shown. Notice that DHT22 is uh, superior than its counterpart DHT11. In this tutorial, I have used DHT11 since it was available to me. You can modify the code easily to incorporate DHT22 as well. Basically, these two sensors, each one of them has two modules. One module for temperature and one module for uh, humidity. For temperature, it has an, an NTC, which is Negative Temperature Coefficient Thermistor. This thermistor is a resistor that changes its resistance according to temperature. If temperature rises, its resistance gets lower, and hence the name negative temperature coefficient. The humidity measuring module is just two electrodes with moisture holding substrate between them. So as the humidity changes, the conductivity of substrate changes and the resistance between the electrodes changes. Then this change in resistance gets measured and processed by the IC on the back of the sensor. The next part is wiring the Arduino on this perf board and also preparing the code. I have made sure that the circuit works perfectly and now it is ready to make a PCB for it. I have used Easy EDA software tool to make the PCBs. It is an online tool, a free tool that allows you to draw schematic, then convert it to PCB and assign components to it. I totally recommend using Easy EDA since it is a very easy program to use, especially for beginners, and it has ready to use libraries and components, so you won't have to uh, use your own components and create your own components unless you are using very exotic parts. And even that is very easy using Easy EDA. After finishing the PCB design, you have to generate the Gerber files in order to fabricate the PCBs. After outputting the Gerber files, I have chosen JLC PCB to fabricate my PCBs. They are based in China and offer high quality PCBs for ridiculously low price. For just two dollars, you can get up to 10 boards of your project. I have chosen five boards and don't need that much boards for this simple project. I will make a complete tutorial about how to use GLC PCB service, but it won't be in this video. So let's continue with our project. It is worth mentioning that GLC PCB has a component store that you can order your required components and has the service to give you the components shipped along with the PCBs, which is a huge benefit. And that will help me get everything I need for my project shipped in one package only. After opening the box and getting the components and the PCBs out, you can see that they are exactly as we designed them to be. It is now time for soldering. It is essential to use helping hands in order to solder properly. Starting from the Arduino Pro Mini since it is the biggest component on the board. Next, I solder the LCD display since it is by far the biggest component of this project. Then I have completed the other components such as the battery terminals and the ICSP header since the Pro Mini does not come with one unlike the Nano which comes with an ICSP header on the board itself. Not to mention the adjustment potentiometer for the LCD contrast which should be used to adjust the contrast of the LCD once power is on. I have used this switch to switch the power on and off. As you can see, the battery positive wire goes through the switch and from the switch to the battery terminals on the PCB while the negative wire goes from the battery directly to the terminals. Now the project is complete and working perfectly as you can see. To limit the brightness of the backlight of the LCD, I have chosen a 100 ohms resistor. You can choose any resistor that you want or just a dead short if you want a full brightness. But I don't recommend this since it will drain the battery so fast. I also recommend that you take off the LED on the PCB of the sensor itself since it will draw much current for nothing since it will be in the inside of the case. You can desolder it properly or use my Super Saiyan Brute Force technique. I have taken the necessary measurements and marked them on the case by using a pencil in order to start drilling. 
I have used my Chinese hand drill that I have shown in a previous mailbag. You can choose your Dremel tool if you own one or just a simple one like mine. I drilled the holes, then I used these bits to clean them out and file the edges to make them smooth. After trial and error, I have finally completed the project. Now the PCB and the parts fit exactly like I wanted in the case and I have used uh, glue to glue the parts in. Then I have glued the battery and the DHT11 wires since they are so thin and they can be cut out. And by that the project is complete now. For code and further explanation, please check my Instructables post mentioned down below in the description. And it also has the PCB design file from EasyEDA that you can use to manufacture such a project from GLC PCB for just $2. This marks the end of this project. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.